Okay, let's continue in this exam hack series for S1, AS Mathematics, and today we're going to be tackling another common question, which I call the independent events question, which basically, in this style of question, they ask you to determine whether two events are independent. So you'll see common phrases like, determine whether A and B, these events, are independent, determine whether S and T are independent, determine whether these two events are independent, independent. You can see they've asked it a few times and I've put down here every time that they have asked that question in past papers and I've put all of my um, personal answers to those. So yeah, so there's every single time they've asked it over the last six years which I think is about nine or ten times they've asked this. So just quickly, an independent event, um, if two events A and B are independent, this basically just means that this equation is true. So in English, that is that if two events are ind independent, then the outcome of one event doesn't affect the outcome of the other. And also, sometimes, occasionally, they ask you if two events are mutually exclusive, and that just simply means that these events cannot occur at the same time. And you can just show that through this equation. But I thought we could just do a question from the worksheet, a good example of this style of question. And so let's do that. So this is from the worksheet. And it says here that Ellie throws a fair tetrahedral dice, uh, each with faces numbered one, one to four. Um, she notes the numbers on the faces of the die that the die land on. So your event S is that the sum of these two numbers is 4, and your event T is the product of these two numbers is an odd number. And you'll notice that they always do this. So when you go through the worksheet, they, they always give you these two two different events. So what I do here is, well, I'm, first of all, I write down, well, the, how, what's the total number of rolls? The total number of rolls is 4 times 4 because, you know, you have four different ways in the first roll and four different ways in the second roll. So the total number of rolls is 4 times 4, which is 16. And it says determine the, whether events S and T are independent. Well, what we have to do is that to show that, to determine whether S and T are independent events, we have to find the probability of S and T occurring simultaneously, occurring together. And we have to see if that's equal to the probability of S occurring times the probability of um, T occurring. And if this uh, probability of S and T occurring equals the probability of S times the probability occurring, um, then the events S and T are independent. If they're not equal, then they're not independent. So we just have to find all of these things individually. So let's write down, so our event uh, S, well this is if the sum of the two numbers is 4. So this is if the sum of the two numbers is 4. And so let's think about uh, event S possible roles. So let's think about what, what roles would mean that event S occurs. Well, the way I like to think about this is I go through in my head. So roll, so we could roll a 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, two, you know, all the way out to 4-4. Four, four. So all the different types of rolls. And I just I just note down which one of where those, whether each of the dice would sum to 4. So let's think of the first one. Well, 1-1 one, one doesn't sum to 4, does it? 1-2 doesn't, 1-3 does. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Then we continue, 1-4, no. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2 does. And I just go through and uh, 2, 3, 2, 4, no. And the next one will be 3, 1. And then there's no other possible roll of this these dice that would sum to 4. So those are your only options. So you got a total of three ways there. And then let's look at, so we could then find the probability. Because remember, we've got to find all these individually. So the probability of S then is the total, which is 3 total ways that we can, event S can occur divided by the total actual rolls that we can do. So that's 3 over 16. So that's that part. And then we should do find the probability of T. So let's look at event T. Event T, well this is the product of the two numbers is an odd number. So this is product. And I always recommend writing it out. Product of the 
two numbers is odd. So when we times the two rolls together, we get an odd number. Well, let's look at event T, possible, possible outcomes or possible rolls. Well, let's think, one, one. Well, one times one is odd, so yep, yeah, one, one is one, one, two, no. One, three, yes. One, four, no, that's even. Two, one, no. Two, 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 three, two, four is all gonna be, when you times them together, gonna be even. And then you can have three, one, yep, yeah, that'll be odd. Three, two, no, three, three, yes. Uh, three, four, no, and then four, one, four, two, four, three, four, four, will all be even. So these are your possible ways for that. So the total there is four. So that means that the probability of t is equal to four over 16. And you'll see by doing the worksheet that the procedure for this type of question is the same every time. Um, so then we need to find, well, what's what are the ways in which event T and S can occur together? Um, like, what are the ways that that can happen? Well, that's if we, um, the sum of the two rolls is four and the product of those two rolls is also odd. Well, that's just gonna be where they occur in both of these um, sets. So, you know, one, three occurs in both and also three, one occurs in both. So those are, for this, so the, no, the number of ways would be one, three, and three, one. That's when they both can occur, different roles. So the total there is two. So the probability of T and S occurring is gonna be two over 16. So now we have all of those things. We can determine whether the events are independent or not. So let's find the probability of S times the probability of T. What does that equal? That's going to be our 3 over 16 times our 4 over 16. 3 over 16 times our 4 over 16. And you just put that in your calculator. You get 3 over 64. And that is clearly, so this is 3 over 64, and that is not equal to 2 over 16. So therefore that means that the probability of the both occurring does not equal to the probability of S occurring times the probability of T occurring and therefore uh, events T and S are not independent. Cool. So we showed that we show that they're not independent. And then it says quickly here that are the events S and T exclusive or mutually exclusive? Well, we know if you look on the worksheet that you know they will be mutually exclusive if this equals zero. But this actually equals three over 64, which is not equal to zero. So therefore T or events T and S are not mutually exclusive. So that's an example of this style of question. So you've got the worksheet which includes all of them and all of my answers, so download that. And when this comes up, which it might, highly likely, uh, you'll be able to answer it very easily. These are all of the, all of these questions are from six years of past papers. So they've asked it nine times in six years, which is quite a lot. Um, but that's it from me. Please hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't. And if you find my content valuable, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. But I'll see you in the next video.